Let me be clear, we all respect the Second Amendment, but it's not without limits. Imagine how much we could get accomplished by conducting background checks, refusing to sell to those who are not allowed to have firearms, and keeping records. It bans for everyone ammo magazines that are in pervasive use. Fired 150 bullets. When he fled, he left 180 rounds of ammunition unused. Ninth Circuit upholds large capacity mag ban. In a recent ruling that's sending shockwaves through the firearms community, the Ninth Circuit Court has taken a firm stance by upholding California's highly debated law that restricts the sale and possession of mags capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition. This decision, in essence, gives the green light to the Golden State to continue enforcing its ban on such mags. Now, you might be wondering what all the fuss is about. Well, it's no secret that the right to keep and bear arms is an individual right uh, Okay, uh, so that's so, by Americans. Let me be clear, we all respect the Second Amendment, but it's not without limits. Imagine how much we could get accomplished. That this issue has sparked intense debate, not just in California, but across the U.S. On one side, proponents of gun control argue that limiting mag capacities reduces the potential for mass shootings and makes it easier for law enforcement to respond to threats. On the other side, staunch defenders of the Second Amendment see this as an infringement on their right to bear arms, claiming that such restrictions infringe on their ability to effectively protect themselves and their families. The Ninth Circuit's decision essentially adds fuel to this already raging fire. The ruling is significant because the Ninth Circuit Court covers several Western states, and its decisions have far-reaching implications beyond just California. This decision directly affects the millions of gun owners in the state and sets a precedent that other states might look to as they contemplate their own firearm regulations. By conducting background checks, refusing to sell to those who are not allowed to have firearms, and keeping records. To ban guns and violate the Second Amendment rights of American citizens. Does behavior change the interpretation of the Second Amendment? What's perhaps most striking about this ruling is the Ninth Circuit's assertion that California is likely to succeed in defending its law in court. This, in essence, says that the state's arguments for the ban are legally sound. It's a stance that's sure to rile up those who believe in the sanctity of the Second Amendment as it effectively legitimizes a law that they see as a direct encroachment on their constitutionally protected rights. Furthermore, the court's rationale for maintaining the ban rests heavily on the concept of irreparable harm. In their view, allowing these high-capacity mags back into the hands of Californians would create a situation where they argue crime would rise, public safety would be jeopardized, and society as a whole would be put at risk. This decision by the Ninth Circuit isn't just about mags. It's about the broader debate on the balance between gun rights and gun control. And while it's a regional ruling, its implications are far from local. It bans for everyone ammo magazines that are in pervasive use. Recognizing that despite our best efforts, we cannot prevent all incidents of gun violence. It's yet another chapter in a contentious national debate that shows no signs of simmering down. So in the wake of this ruling, the question remains, will it stand the test of time and higher courts, or is this just another step in the ongoing battle over gun rights in the United States? One thing's for sure, it's a topic that isn't going away anytime soon. Panel's Decision and Factors Considered The Ninth Circuit Panel's recent decision to uphold California's ban on mags capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition is a ruling that's making waves in the world of gun control and Second Amendment rights. But what exactly led them to this decision and what factors did they consider? First and foremost, the panel leaned on the belief that California was likely to succeed in defending the law in court. When someone does something to your family members that is illegal, we need to take them off the streets. Fired 150 bullets. When he fled, he left 180 rounds of ammunition unused. In other words, they saw the state's case as strong and compelling. This factor is crucial because it sets the stage for the court's decision to maintain the ban. By essentially saying, hey, California's got a solid argument here, the panel gave a nod to the legality and constitutionality of the law. Another significant factor the panel cited was the potential for irreparable harm if they didn't implement a stay on the law. It's repeated over and over again that the Second Amendment is unlimited, excuse me, is not unlimited. 
It has limits. We will undoubtedly hear a variety of arguments from our Republican friends opposed to taking these deadly weapons off our streets. In their view, not putting a hold on the ban could lead to some dire consequences. They argued that not enforcing the law would create a scenario in which crime rates could rise, public safety would be compromised, and society as a whole would be put at risk. This point is a big deal because it suggests that the court isn't just looking at the ban as a mere inconvenience. They're saying that not enforcing it would be actively dangerous. Perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of the panel's decision is their assertion that the balance of interests and public interest is in favor of California. By actually uh, taking guns away from dangerous, violent felons. But it also includes countless shootings that take place every day, devastate families. This means they're not just evaluating the ban in a vacuum. They're considering how it affects the state as a whole. By claiming that the public interest leans towards maintaining the ban, the panel is effectively saying that the law serves the greater good, which is a compelling argument in favor of the ban. Lastly, the panel's decision to rely on the Supreme Court's Bruin case is a critical component. The Bruin case emphasized that the right protected by the Second Amendment is not unlimited. The panel seems to be suggesting that the ban on high-capacity mags falls well within the boundaries of this constitutional protection, reinforcing their stance that California is in the right. Dissenting judges critique. Amid the recent Ninth Circuit panel's decision to uphold California's ban on high-capacity mags, a dissenting voice emerged from within the court itself. Some judges on the panel took a stance that directly opposed the majority's opinion, and their critique was nothing short of vehement. These dissenting judges minced no words when they asserted that the Ninth Circuit has consistently, over time, undermined Second Amendment rights. They claim that this ruling is just another episode in a series of actions by the court that have chipped away at the rights enshrined in the Second Amendment. Perhaps the most striking criticism they voiced, the Constitution has a right to keep and bear arms, require safe storage, and ban large capacity magazines, bump stocks, and ghost guns, was their assertion that the court has repeatedly disregarded the directions set by the Supreme Court. This is no small accusation. The Supreme Court's decisions should serve as guiding lights for lower courts, ensuring consistency and adherence to the principles laid out by the highest legal authority in the land. The fact that these dissenting judges believe that the Ninth Circuit has, in essence, ignored these directions is a serious indictment. Furthermore, they didn't hold back in their critique of the majority's reliance on non-binding district court decisions. The majority appeared to lean on decisions from lower courts that are not legally binding as precedent. These dissenting judges called out this approach, suggesting that the majority was essentially cherry-picking decisions that supported their position while ignoring the broader legal landscape. Earlier this year, the ATF issued a rule that unilaterally puts new restrictions on Second Amendment rights. Transfer or possession of semi-automatic weapons and large capacity ammunition feeding device. Does a brace increase the accuracy of a pistol? But perhaps the most substantial grievance voiced by these dissenting judges was the lack of engagement with the text and historical context of the Second Amendment. They argued that the majority's decision was, in essence, a refusal to grapple with the constitutional text and the historical backdrop against which the Second Amendment was written. The historical context and textual analysis are critical components in evaluating the legality of gun control laws. Ignoring these aspects raises questions about the integrity of the legal process and the panel's commitment to a robust examination of the Second Amendment's relevance in contemporary society. In essence, the dissenting judges have provided a stark contrast to the majority's position. It is improper, you cannot ban weapons that are, quote, in common use at the time. Americans have the fundamental right to keep and bear arms that shall not be infringed. Their critique suggests a deep-seated belief that the Ninth Circuit is not only undermining Second Amendment rights, but also failing to adhere to the directives of the Supreme Court. The reliance on non-binding decisions and the absence of historical and textual engagement further fuel their argument that the court has missed the mark in its duty to uphold the constitutional rights of the American people. Their dissent adds another layer to the already complex and heated debate surrounding gun control and the Second Amendment. Implications for Second Amendment Rights
The Ninth Circuit's recent decision to uphold California's ban on high-capacity mags doesn't just impact the Golden State. It has much broader implications for Second Amendment rights across the entire nation. But Madam Speaker, guns have been prevalent in the United States of America since before our founding. They seek to eliminate the law enforcement agency responsible for protecting communities from gun violence. The ruling serves as a significant restriction on firearm accessories and adds fuel to the ongoing debate over how we interpret and apply the Second Amendment in a modern context riddled with gun control laws and regulations. First and foremost, the ruling sets a precedent that extends well beyond California's borders. The Ninth Circuit's jurisdiction covers multiple Western states, and its decisions have a far-reaching impact. This means that millions of gun owners within its jurisdiction are now subjected to the upheld ban on high-capacity mags. Furthermore, this decision sends a message to other states considering similar bans. Open on the table, you could pretty much say that falls in the category of a slip. Uh, with the kind of weapon that we will be voting uh, to ban today. Suggesting that such restrictions could potentially pass legal muster. The implications for Second Amendment rights are enormous. On one hand, proponents of gun control hail this ruling as a victory for public safety, contending that it limits the potential for mass shootings and facilitates more effective law enforcement responses. On the other hand, staunch defenders of the Second Amendment see this as an encroachment on their rights to bear arms. They argue that it restricts their ability to protect themselves and their families effectively. Potential Next Steps in the Legal Process The dissenting judge's suggestion of a potential next step in the legal process could have far-reaching consequences for the ongoing debate over gun rights and regulations. By indicating that the plaintiffs may consider an emergency application to the Supreme Court, they're opening the door to a legal battle of monumental significance. An emergency application to the Supreme Court is no small matter. And, and I don't think there's any doubt that this administration is more pro-gun control than the past administration. Today we take another step to advance historic gun violence prevention legislation. It's essentially a call for the highest court in the land to take swift action on a case, bypassing the usual lengthy process of hearings and appeals. If the plaintiffs do decide to pursue this avenue, it would signal their deep commitment to challenging the Ninth Circuit's decision and their belief that the case holds significant national importance. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.